Hey guys, how the bloody hell are you? Um, I purchased a Raspberry Pi 3. It's this one right here. You can tell because there's a Raspberry on the logo. I think that looks much like a real Raspberry, but alas, there we go. Um, yeah, that's the actual, this one here is the one I'm going to show you shortly. Um, I bought Raspberry Pi 3 because at some point in the future, I plan on setting up um, an emulation station, like literally a, a Raspberry Pi image that I can throw pads in and I can play retro gaming um, for things I own the cartridge to, obviously. Um, with friends so uh, the reason i wanted this particular raspberry pi piqued my interest was because it's got a 1.2 gigahertz 64-bit quad core arm v8 cpu wow what a mouthful uh yeah it's got so it's got quite a bit of power behind it um and it's got a built-in wireless lan built-in wi-fi so that i can free up all four of the usb ports without too much of a problem um form factor wise it's got stuff on one side and stuff on the long side so the stuff here and here but no ports around the back apart from the memory card port. So it's quite two sides really need to be exposed any time, which is a bit of a pain. But, you know, it's okay. It's better than the last Raspberry Pi where every side bloody had something coming out of it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So other than having built-in Wi-Fi, four USB ports, it's got full HDMI, a 40-pin GPIO header, which you might use if you're that type, um, micro SD card slot, and a cool video um, IV 3D graphics core. I don't actually know what that means. Grab your eyes. Not in the Vegas. Hopefully it'll make games cool. Uh, who knows? But uh, one of the things I thought when I first had it was I don't have time to set up the retro stuff I want to do at the moment. And I don't want to leave it sitting on the side. I want to see if it works. So uh, I had a quick Google. And Ubuntu Mate for Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 is a thing. Now, what's what's uh, interesting there is, uh, there you go, the image supports integrated Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi 3. But support for the integrated Raspberry Pi Bluetooth is incomplete. We hope to have that sorted soon, which was a bit of a bummer because uh, I've got a, uh, I've, I've got a Bluetooth speaker here. I was hoping to use with the Raspberry Pi um, because I thought that'd be interesting to play with. Um, but no, no such luck. Uh, so what I did is I installed it, uh, which is fine. It was straightforward. Download it through Torrent or direct download. But Torrent's probably a little bit easier, but it's more straightforward to me anyway. Um, make just get a blank SD card and DD over, or in my case, I did this because I never thought of doing this before. Apparently, you can uh, you can copy over disk images using GNOME disks. Didn't know that. Found that out literally last week when I did this. Weird. Uh, but yeah, it worked great. That did. I was really quite impressed with that. Uh, and then once you got installed, you you plug it in, turn it on, and it'll do an unpack thing, and then it'll ask you to go through like uh, pick your language, pick your region, and it'll uh, inst install like you know set up the operating system. Um, and then after that's all done, you have to set up a user uh, and then reset the machine, well, the Pi, I suppose, the machine still. Uh, and then you run these commands here to um, um, to extend the file system to fill all the empty space, which again worked flawlessly. Um, and then it's got this nice little thing called graphical. So you type graphical disable to turn off X11 and graphical enable to turn on X11, which is so incredibly straightforward. I mean, that could not be more straightforward, which is pretty cool. Um, and then it's got some things about hardware accelerated video, but that's not something I'm using it for. So it wasn't really relevant to me. Uh, lots of regular updates. Uh, but I know what you're thinking. Let's see it then. Uh, well, yeah, there you go. I'm using X11 VNC. The reason I'm using X11 VNC for this is because I don't have a hardware capture device. And I certainly can't record video on a Raspberry Pi without things going very, very wrong. Uh, so here's the desktop through X11 VNC. That means when I move a window around, I get an outline. Because I haven't got preview turned on because I'd kill it. Um, so there you go. And let's have a look at the temp. I've just been running this to keep an eye on it. 50.8 degrees in temp is at the minute, 50.8 degrees C. That's fine. And that is with, you know, there you go. Look, if I get my pie out here, no caller on there whatsoever. And that's been running for about two days. I want to say about two days that's been running for. Um, there you go. So that's cool. That's been running there. And it's just been running the desktop, Ireland desktop. And occasionally a bit of web browsing, but that's been running. It's fine. So I don't think I really need to worry about calling for this, but we'll see when I start running games on it. Uh, this is, right, what you're looking at right now is the Raspberry Pi version of Ubuntu Mate. Uh, I've put a cool Windows 95 background on because I'm cool. Um, and other than that, I've just put this monitor up here so I can keep a little eye on web usage and uh, memory and CPU. Uh, volume control won't work because I don't have any speakers attached to this of any sort. And I'm connected currently over Wi-Fi. Uh, that's because, obviously, I'm connected to Wi-Fi because there's nothing plugged into it, so that's pretty obvious. Um, one of the things I would notice about this is it's surprisingly usable. So if I click on Firefox there, it's not going to come straight away because this is a Raspberry Pi, not a PC. You know, it, it's a Raspberry, it's a projects machine. Um, and it takes a few seconds to load. Not an unreasonable amount of seconds. Now, bear in mind, I have never clocked this. I haven't optimized it. I've installed the operating system. 
done some crazy customizations and not done anything to make it run smooth and just thrown it on there. So let's have a look, shall we? Uh, let's try going to the XKCD website. That's always a good one to visit. Um, you'll see it takes a couple of seconds to actually kick in. It's like once it's loaded, it has to have a little think. Um, come on, there we go. There we go. Now, what's interesting is as I scroll down, I mean, yeah, it's jumpy, it's jerky, but it's actually more usable than I expected. I mean, this is running an entire modern desktop environment. This is running like a serious desktop environment. Not a fake desktop environment, not something that's designed to be super scaled back, but Ubuntu Matei. I run Ubuntu Matei on my laptop for about three months, and I used it every day as like my daily thing on my laptop. It was fine. Um, so to say I'm running this, granted it's the ARM version and the software resources are a lot less. Um, it's crazy that this is like a full browser on a Raspberry Pi. I mean, this does more for £35 and a memory card than my entire PC did at 15 You know, it's crazy. Um, you can see the memory usage spike there when I load it up. Uh, so let's close that down and you should see memory usage start to come back down again. Uh, and you can see straight away that the temperature went up by about 5 degrees as soon as I started loading software, which... Again, I can live with because, you know, it's well within safe regions. And then uh, one of the things you can do with this, with this operating system has a welcome screen that lets you install software with one click, which is quite cool. Again, takes a while to load. Probably need a faster memory card. would probably help loads, but I just bought a cheap one off Amazon. Um, there you go, and you can install software here with a click in the welcome screen, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so you can install, there you go. And obviously, app get works fine, but uh, you, if you just want to install it and just have a look, you can just go click, 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 and just install stuff really quick, which is nice. Um, there's some few system tools here as well, which is pretty cool. Come on, it'll get here eventually. Yay! So, it's like, not a massive selection. I mean, system tools is Bleach Bit, Hard Info, and Terminator. You know, not exactly a blow your mind, but to get the basics done, these are things that are actually quite useful. And games, I think it's just like Minecraft and Solitaire in here. There you go, uh, it's got so oh, super tux cart. I'm not gonna try and run that over X7 VN, so I can tell you that now. Um and uh and size size sol I don't know, solitaire game, I think. Um and it also comes pre-installed with not loads of applications, it's got Minecraft Pi ready in it, which is playable I suppose. Uh it's got all the basics you'd need, um, including in the programming section, it's got the scratch UI thing that's the Raspberry Pi is quite fond of, and uh, Sonic Pi. Uh, as well as uh, an ID for Python, and I install Genie just to see how it runs. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's got all the basics. I mean, this is it's slow. I'm not going to say it's not slow, but for the amount of money it costs, there's a crazy amount of PC here, um, and I just thought it was really interesting and well worth talking about for 10 minutes to say, hey, you should probably check this out because it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like it a lot, and I have browsed that I have it plugged in. I'm just running it for a few days, see how it runs. Um, and it's not something, I'm not going to keep a desktop operating system on this Raspberry Pi. I have no intention of doing that. But I do find it fascinating that you can. Um, I personally don't have much use for it. Um, I could see people using it to download drivers and stuff. Um, just like a really cheap box to download drivers on and just throw on a memory stick if you're working on another PC. Um, yeah, I can see that being really useful. Uh, and I can, I can really see people having uses for the desktop side of it. So they just want to browse the web and nothing else. They just want to be able to do the most basic web browser i can go yeah i can i can see how that you can go yeah 35 quid that'll do um do i think it's something i'll use no for this definitely not something i will use definitely not something i'm interested in using every day but fascinating nonetheless um what i will do is record you guys a video when i get my emulation stuff working and let you know how that goes and i might even throw a uh, media center pc uh, media center thing on here to see how it works um to see how well it handles it but so far, I'm really impressed with the performance. And for like this very small amount of money, cannot complain. If anyone asked, this case is off Amazon. I just typed in Raspberry 3 case that came up. It was super glossy. It was horrible and disgusting. But thanks to the help of this sandpaper block applied to this case, I managed to get rid of that shine and leave it with a nice rustic look, which I think is quite nice. Um, there are still fingerprints on it, though, because it's really crazy shiny plastic. Uh, but yeah. That's what I did there, and hopefully you found this interesting, and I promise to get back to recording game videos tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.